Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the controversy surrounding Trevor Noah? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of Trevor Noah, then I'll move to my analysis. Trevor Noah was born in Johannesburg, South Africa, on February 20, 1984. His father is white and his mother is black. At the time he was born, it was illegal in South Africa for people of different races to be married or have sex. These relationships were decriminalized in 1985, the year after Trevor was born. Trevor hosted a radio show for a while before focusing on stand-up comedy. He enjoyed a good deal of success. He recorded a number of comedy specials that were quite popular in South Africa and in some other countries. In 2011, Trevor Noah moved to the United States. He appeared on The Tonight Show, The Late Show with David Letterman, as well as several other shows. Trevor became a recurring contributor on The Daily Show on Comedy Central in December 2014. The host at the time, John Stewart, announced that he was leaving and that Trevor would be his replacement. This was an unusual decision, considering that Trevor was not well known and he had drawn a lot of criticism for making sexist and anti-Semitic remarks. Despite this, Comedy Central took a chance and stayed with Trevor as the host. Right after Trevor took over, The Daily Show lost 37% of its viewership. Trevor did not appear to be very funny, and he primarily targeted conservatives with his humor. There was the sense that he was not challenging anybody on the left. Comedy Central tried to argue that even though Trevor lost much of his audience, he was very popular with millennials. This is like a grocery chain opening a store in a remote location and saying, not many people are buying products from the store, but we now have more customers who drive cars instead of walking or taking the bus. How does that help the store to make money? There's the sense that the Comedy Central executives graduated from the Nicholas Cage School of Financial Management. By 2017, The Daily Show had lost over half of its viewership. It was not working out with Trevor as the host, yet Comedy Central extended his contract through 2022. On September 29, 2022, Trevor announced that he will be leaving The Daily Show at an undetermined future date. Trevor made it seem as though this was his decision, saying that he wanted to perform in other countries and learn new languages. Some have wondered if Comedy Central did not strongly encourage Trevor to make an exit. Now moving to my analysis. The fact that Trevor Noah spent seven years on The Daily Show is confusing to many people, but he did have, and still has, a number of fans. Trevor has a unique perspective. He is biracial, and he grew up in South Africa. Many people were hoping that he would bring this perspective to The Daily Show, which he did to some extent, but they also wanted him to be funny, and he was unable to deliver in that regard. Here are my thoughts about why Trevor Noah lost The Daily Show audience. This is just a theory, my opinion. Trevor Noah appealed to a younger audience who was largely left-leaning. Among liberals, a small but vocal subset has formed, which does not respect the political process. These are people who embrace the cancel culture as well as the woke and politically correct agenda. These intellectually lazy individuals demonize their opponents personally instead of attacking ideas. If they disagree with an idea, they assume that the person who came up with the idea is evil and full of hate. Trevor made the mistake of believing that a large number of liberals belonged to this group. He painted all liberals with the same brush and drastically overestimated the size of the cancel culture, as well as the woke and politically correct individuals. This is an understandable mistake because this group is loud, obnoxious, and highly active on social media. Every one person with that extreme ideology sounds like a thousand normal people. As Trevor Noah was delivering his brand of one-sided humor, attacking conservatives and ignoring liberals, he was getting a lot of positive feedback from that small audience. This became a problem for Trevor. Most liberals, 
and most conservatives for that matter, envision the political process as a lively debate where people try to make their best arguments in favor of particular ideologies. They view this process as both functional and enjoyable. Without a debate, the game becomes boring, unproductive, and like an echo chamber. Essentially, Trevor insulted his audience with simplistic and one-sided attempts at humor. He assumed that they were biased, like he is, but he was incorrect. Trevor was pandering to a very small group while believing it represented the majority. Regardless of how large he thought the group was, he was selling out and indulging in his own need to attack conservatives. He betrayed not only the spirit of the political process, but the essence of humor. He removed all the intellectual and entertainment value from the game. Here's an analogy for the situation. Imagine a young man who buys a video game. Let's say it's a game where the player controls a soldier who has various types of weapons, like a laser pistol, missile launchers, flamethrowers, and machine guns. The object is to blow away these alien creatures who have invaded some planet. When the man first gets the game, he is frustrated because the creatures are very hard to destroy. His soldier is not successful. The character keeps getting wiped out by the aliens. The man goes online and looks for a cheat code so that his weapons will be 10 times as effective. The first time he plays the game using the cheat code, it's a lot more fun. He wipes out all the aliens and saves the planet. The next time he plays, it's not quite as fun because all the challenge has been removed. Now there is no chance of losing. Without the ability to lose, the game is no longer fun. Connecting this analogy back to the game of politics, without some type of debate and compromise, the political process is meaningless. Trevor Noah is the cheat code. His style of making fun of conservatives and sparing liberals did not have any intellectual value. It was also not entertaining. It was repetitive and 100% predictable. I don't think his audience was upset because he made jokes about conservatives. John Stewart did that with great success. I think they became bored because he was not treating liberals the same way. He had a lack of authenticity. He was protecting one group. He was assuming that his audience was not capable of rational thought or compromise. He was supplying them with a simplistic product devoid of any wit or thoughtfulness. Trevor Noah betrayed both activism and comedy. Any power that Trevor had to create political change would have come through holding both sides accountable. Instead, he was trying to make a decision for the audience about what side they should take. He was trying to remove their sense of power, their sense that they could make changes on their own. As it turns out, Trevor wasn't good at combining activism and comedy because they don't really belong together. Comedy is too irreverent to have loyalty to a political party. Comedy is an art form that rises above the debate and criticizes everyone. It is an authentic art form. Trevor's audience realized that he was not authentic. He was misusing comedy. I don't think that my theory about Trevor Noah completely explains his failure on The Daily Show. There is another important piece which explains why Trevor was so unpopular. It may actually explain his failure even more so than the political aspects which I talked about. Specifically, Trevor is not good at the type of comedy required for The Daily Show. I don't think that Trevor is necessarily an awful comedian, but the Daily Show format exposed his weaknesses without highlighting his strengths. At a technical level, Trevor's writing and timing are just not good enough for the kind of dry and witty humorous style that he attempted on The Daily Show. He's funnier when he's telling jokes and kind of laughing at himself and with the audience, like when Trevor tells stories about his life experiences, but he fails when he tries to deliver technically demanding humor. If one looks at other famous comedians who are known for not laughing at their own jokes, we see that they put in a tremendous amount of effort to refine their content and delivery. For example, George Carlin, Rodney Dangerfield, and Norm MacDonald agonized over every word they selected and how they delivered that word. 
They were careful in their craft. They also paid attention to their environment and were open to exposing the absurdity in anything that they saw. There is the sense that Trevor Noah does not have that kind of respect for humor. It's something that he used to support a political agenda as opposed to an art form that he appreciated. A lot of people view Trevor Noah as someone who was lifted up for political reasons, but he does not have any talent. I think that Trevor actually does have some talent and could be a good comedian in the future, but he needs to refine his skills. He needs to let go of the pandering to a small audience and focus on the technical aspects of humor. He was trying to cover for his lack of talent by promoting a political agenda. He thought he could win an audience with just that. During his speech where he announced his exit from The Daily Show, Trevor said that he has loved trying to figure out how to make people laugh, as if he did figure it out. In reality, I think he needs to continue that journey. There is still a lot for him to discover. If it's something that he loves to do, he should do more of it. Trevor also said that he was surprised to be selected for The Daily Show because he was a random comedian nobody knew. It's hard to disagree with him on this point, but he would not be the first performer to achieve celebrity status by just having good luck. I think the key for Trevor is to capitalize on that good fortune and work to become a better comedian. He now has a chance to earn the fame that he has been handed. The last item I want to talk about is how people will eventually figure out the truth. When Trevor Noah started hosting The Daily Show, the critics raved about his performance. They thought he was the best comedian ever, who was going to revolutionize The Daily Show and may revolutionize comedy in general. The critics weren't merely positive. They went over the top to convince the audience that the person who they were watching was actually funny. Even still, many viewers stopped watching. Of those who continued to watch, many of them were puzzled about why Trevor was getting such good reviews. Eventually, they simply decided that he was not funny, and they stopped watching as well. So all these people were being told how Trevor was such a great comedian but they knew that he was not. There are definitely people who watched Trevor who were okay with the one-sided political discussions and his frequent jokes about racism, but they were not okay with a lack of humor. I think the moral to the story is there's a limit to how much can be achieved through misleading the public. If somebody is not a good performer, people are going to figure it out regardless of political affiliation. The only votes that matter belong to the audience. Those are my thoughts in the case of Trevor and Noah. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.